Welcome back. The National Commission on Research, Science and Technology, the NCRST, is participating in a high-level African Union and ODA NEPA dialogue in Accra, Ghana, focused on advancing the science, technology and innovation strategy for 2034, also known as STISA 2034. Now, the strategy aims to strengthen the continent's capacity in research, innovation and industrialization ensuring that African countries invest meaningfully in science for development. We're now speaking to Mubiana Katukala, the Manager for Resource Mobilization and Grants Management at the NCRSC, to unpack Namibia's role in this continental agenda and what it means for local innovation. Good evening and uh, welcome to the Daily Roundup. Good evening and thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Well, to start with, Mr. Katukula, just talk to us about the main goal of uh, the AU and the Ardenepa dialogue um, that's taking place in Ghana. Um, I think to start with, the, I would want to contextualize the STISA, which, mm -hmm. is the, um, which was in initiated by the heads of state of Africa in Guinea in, in 2014. Mm -hmm. So it was from that uh, meeting in Guinea where the heads of state came up with the STISA 2024, mm -hmm. which was looking on how Africa um, can invest and also African, has, so African states can fund research in the continent to realize a lot of uh, continental needs, especially that, those which are earmarked or tagged to Vision 2063 of the continent. Mm -hmm. So that's where mm -hmm. it comes from. And the 10 year ended in 2024. So in Ghana, when we met, we were launching the STISA 2034, which looks into on how uh, member states are supposed to come together uh, through their granting councils or, or funding councils on how they can fund research um, using homegrown financing that can realize a lot of uh, lagging of African initiatives that needs funding for our, our African states uh, to realize a lot of their developmental agendas. Thank you. Talk to us about how the NCRST is positioning Namibia to align with this continental vision. Um, like I said, the, after the launch of STISA 2024 in 2014, mm -hmm. uh, it was launched by the heads of state. So the heads of state, after their launch, gave this mandate to the AU under the AU Secretariat, which now translates into the granting councils. Like for example, NCRST is an agency of the Ministry of Education. So we are now the agency of the government that implements TISA. Mm -hmm. So NCRST takes the whole mandate and the objective of TISA 2034, incorporates that in its um, strategy, uh, business strategy plan, which currently we have, which runs from 2024 to 2029. Mm -hmm. So we get those objectives to bring them now into the strategy so that we can disseminate the, the emphasis that STISA 2034 talks about, and mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. mainly focuses on funding. And this has to be funded with the partnership of public-private public partnership mm -hmm. to sit with that uh, private sector also gets involved in funding research in the country. Right. And also as we get funding and support from the state through our line ministry. Well, on that note, what opportunities then does TISA 2034, um, you know, hold for or create for local researchers and innovators through this uh, funding? STISA 20, one of the main uh, points or objectives of TISA 2034 is about creating consortia in funding, um, mm -hmm. where the granting councils come together to fund common goals and needs in their countries. So we have also what is called the, the SGCI, which is the Science Granting Council Initiative, where all the granting councils or funding councils in countries have formed a consortia. Um, and this consortia of funders comes in play to ensure that we, we share resources through the MOUs and partnership that we create. If you look at Namibia, it's quite a very small ecosystem when it comes to having all the research infrastructure that we need. Mm. But mm. Uh, through the STISA and also the SGCI, we are capable of exploiting the partnership, the MOU that we have with other funding councils like NRF South Africa, Botswana, and also Kenya, to mention a few, on how we can provide funding, for example, for mobility for our researchers in the country to go and take advantage of the research infrastructure that can be in these countries. Mm. Right now, I think uh, maybe in the, in the two days or so from now, we'll be 
awarding um, a call that uh, is on water that uh, has been on running. I think we finished the review today with the reviewers that we had appointed. We will be waiting for the the leadership of NCRST to do the final touch up of, on that. So that funding also comes on as a, a collaborative or partnership funding with other funders from Kenya and also NRF South Africa comes in. So we bring these resources together mm. so that at least uh, our researchers in our countries can benefit from the shared resources that uh, we do have in our funding councils or in our countries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We know that Professor Nisia Peters is uh, representing the NCRST there in Ghana, but talk to us about the key lessons or commitments perhaps um, that um, you know the NCRST has taken away from, from this engagement. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway that uh, we can mention up is uh, trying to, to take advantage of the, the partnership that we are creating, um, creating the working, um, creating MOUs with other funders and also creating a conducive environment where we can be able to co collaborate with other funding councils that which can benefit our researchers and innovators in our respective countries. You mentioned, of course, earlier that, you know, um, the PPP partnership is very important. So how can stakeholders from government to private investors you know, get involved really in advancing this agenda? Yeah, um, if I start with the private sector, private sector works mainly on what is it that there is in research for them to improve their, uh, their productivity and all their profits. But for that to take place, they need to have research to be conducted. So as NCRST, we appeal to the private sector to be involved in a lot of what they are doing with research institutions in the country, especially those that are like the tertiary institutions we have in the country and research institutions that are affiliated with, with NCRST so that they can realize much of what they need to research. because. These are the places where a lot of researchers are. If you look at UNAM, you look at NAST, you look at IUM, to mention a few, you have all academics that conduct research. And if the, the private sector can exploit that advantage eh, to partner with these institutions, then they can realize much of what they need to, to research on using the, the advantage of the, uh, of the researchers mm -hmm. which are found in these institutions. But from government part, as you know, NCRS was created by an act of parliament in 2004, and one of the mandates that it was created on was to um, conduct and also supervise research in the country, foster relationships with other funders internationally and locally. Apart from that also, it's very important that at the creation of NCRST, uh, we were created as a research fund. Now, if you look at the NTA fund, for example, Petro fund, mm. you mentioned all those funds, they do have a levy that enables those institutions to conduct the mandate that we created for. Right. But after the creation of NCRST, we do have a research fund without funds and or a levy. And that's why now the government comes in. Because the, it's also interesting that the patron of NCRST is always the sitting president of the country. And as a result, we would want to see that being a reality. Because currently we receive funding from the state which is mainly operational. Mm. And much of the research that NCRST is funding is mainly sourced through the SGCI initiatives that I've mentioned, STISA initiatives, and, and other calls that we, we do apply for. And when we bring this money into the country, that's when we give calls to our researchers in the country to apply for. Because mm. what comes from government mainly goes for operation. And that's why the government needs to step in. And it's very interesting, if I can point out that uh, um, our parliament is quite a new parliament with very young parliamentarians. And one of their objectives, or main objectives, is to formulate laws that are going to realize that this country achieves and realizes Vision 2030. We can't achieve, we can't realize Vision 2030 with externally funded projects in the country. Because a lot of externally funded projects comes with the external objectives which might not speak to our own interest in the country. Right, right. And th that's where the government comes in to see to it that at least they need to fund the research fund that was created by an act of parliament so that researchers in the country from all research institutions can be able to access these funds for various research uh, endeavors that they would want to embark on. Mr. Katukula, it was lovely having you with us here in studio. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Well, we're going to take a brief break when we come back. Our conversations here on the Daily Roundup continues. Stay with us.